Today we are going to be talking about how to stop being a creepy online stalker. I've gotten a lot of requests for this video. A lot of you have been asking me how you can stop being a fucking stalker online and I'm going to tell you how in this video. What's up Bulldogs? Welcome back. If you're just joining me for the first time, I'm John from BulldogMindset.com and on this channel I teach you how to build mental toughness, how to become the kind of man that is able to get what you want out of life. And so <clears throat> I actually got an email from someone who is kind of in trouble and he realizes that he's done some creepy stalker shit and he wants some help. He basically titled the subject line of this, my intense personal obsession to my former co-worker how can I snap out of it? So I'm going to tell you how to snap out of it. And guys, you're going to want to stay on to the end because I'm going to give you some some advice on, you know, on how that uh, that if you're in this mind frame, if you've got an obsession about a, a girl, uh, how you can end that for one once and for all. Before that, let's take a look at this actual email. OK, and let's see what uh, what we got going on here. He says, yo, John, I've been Almost a year ever since you, uh, your Bulldog Mindset videos about life, fitness, nutrition, Bulldog lifestyle uh, caught my fullest attention. I'm an avid supporter of your videos. What I'm about to tell you is rather an unorthodox uh, but quite intense online felony stalking of mine in a former relationship with one of my special co uh, female co-worker of mine. A story which might surpass all nice guy syndrome and friend zone stories out of proportion by a mile. That that scares me a little bit there. This better be good, man. All right, I'm scared here. I viewed that hot coworker as a sister, and she used to call me her brother, which I technically took very literally. Somebody's been on Pornhub too much. I, I don't know about you, but I, I'm not really looking for, for the girls to, to call me brother. Uh, you know what I'm getting? Maybe daddy, maybe big daddy. But, uh, but brother, I'm not sure about this, man. What is, what is going on here? That's a little weird. Uh, which I technically took very literally. Okay, there we go again. And boy, was that a mistake that was. <coughs> I treated her like a princess at work while I was stripping her in my mind. And I just couldn't resist until today. And she knew that. Uh, and she used this against me in the most treacherous ways, at least from my point of view. If you're stripping her in your mind... Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of give you this this dichotomy here, right? This is called the Madonna horror complex, right? Which a lot of guys you know suffer from. This is I think Freud. It's a Freudian type of of psychology thing here. But but basically, this is the problem with a lot of you guys that fall into the nice guy category, right? We'll say the the non Chad category, and it's not it's not your looks, it's your mentality. Okay, not to say that. That, that some of some of you are not fucking ugly, but I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Fuck, guys, stop getting all angry. So, so here's the thing, guys. All right, you cannot view a woman in a sexual way, but then treat her like a princess. Like it's like you want is compartmentalization, right? To be a real man, okay, you can't have those compartments, right? You have to just express your sexuality fully. Now, I understand in society today masculine sexual sexuality is feared and it's called something bad and it's quote rape culture and all this kind of crap and sexual harassment you got to forget all that shit because i'm not saying that you should just go out and you know be a fucking savage and just you know rape and pillage I'm not saying that at all i'm just saying that you got to kind of let that programming go and you got to realize that when you're dealing with women that you're attracted to you need to Act like you are sexually attracted to them, not like they're your sister and not like they're some kind of princess that you're going to be really nice to and take care of and, and fall into that nice guy type of syndrome. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, now, you know, and, and here's why, okay, because there's there's two reasons why. One, at its very core, it's du duplicitous. Duplicitous? Du you're you're two-faced, okay? Uh, you basically have... Uh, an ulterior motive okay anyone who has an ulterior motive anytime someone has an ulterior motive this is why sales guys are sleazy and why you know genuine genuine genuinity fuck what is up with the vocabulary today uh being genuine is uh is a highly valuable skill people value in integrity or you know not skill but character trait okay so it shouldn't be a skill i'm genuine is a skill it's like i can pretend to be genuine look there we go but the reason why is because people 
can sense an incongruency in the way that you act and what you think. And this is really, really important, especially with women. Women are really good at this. If you have this girl that you like, and you know, coworker is not necessarily the best example, but uh, you know, you, you can do that. You can still indicate with your speech and in the way that you, you act. But if you have a girl that you like and you treat her really, really nice, like, like she's your sister, okay? And she knows that you're sexually attracted to her, right? but you're not, you're not showing that, that side. It, it's sort of like a trick. Right? It, it's sort of like you've got this ulterior motive. She knows that you're trying to get something from her. Okay, you're, you're not being very forthcoming. Okay, it's it's a covert type of contract. Like you're doing favors for her in order for her to do something for you. Right? Uh, you know, I mean, even this brother example is a good one. Right? If you pretend to be her brother, she sees you like you're her brother, and then all of a sudden you're like, mm, I kind of want to fuck you. <laughs> it's kind of weird, right? It would be weird if, if, you're, if your brother or sister said that, right? So again, I'm not trying to be like super vulgar here, but, but I want you to understand how kind of weird that is and why that just doesn't work. So it doesn't work for, from that perspective of, of creating attraction. The, you know, the, the girl is not going to like that, okay? Uh, but it also doesn't work for you because what ends up happening to you is you're, you're, you're you basically split yourself, right? You, you have kind of a split personality or, or psychology. And one of them, you know, you're you're looking to marry the good, pure woman who would never do anything bad. On the other hand, this is that Madonna uh, whore complex. You, you've got the, the slut, the whore that you would just, you know, whack off to porn and, and you know, do, do depraved things to her. And you can't see them in the same person. And you need to see them in the same person because that is what human sexuality, especially male sexuality, is. That's what women actually desire. So, you know, that that pure woman... Because so, here And here's the thing, guys. And, and this is why I'm telling you this, okay? Like, if, you, if you've listened this far, good, because you're about to get a life lesson uh, for you guys that is, is going gonna, gonna to make a huge difference in your life, okay? Because a lot of you guys... You're going to get into relationships with girls or you're going to marry a girl someday. I know it doesn't seem like it, but you will, maybe, okay? And what's going to happen is you're going to fuck it up. And here's how you're going to fuck it up, okay? Listen, the way that you're going to fuck it up is you're going to marry this nice girl, okay? And she's going to be nice and sweet and everything. And you're going to treat her really sweet, okay? And especially in the bedroom, you're not going to be that dominant alpha guy. You're not going to slap her around, okay? Honestly, no, you're not going to pull her hair. You're not going to call her a slut. I'm trying to how, to how how I can say this without saying that's what women want. But let me just say that's what women want. And, and it's not necessarily those words or those things. But women want to be, in general, right, as a, as a sex, dominated by men in bed and almost treated like an object in the domain of the bedroom. Okay, not in the whole, like, you know, they, they don't want to be subjugated to, to men in, in general society. That's why we have, you know, the women's suffrage and, and things like that. They don't just want to be under your thumb. But in the bedroom, for the most part, most women, right, a large percentage of them, you know, if you don't believe me, read Fifty Shades of Grey. Trust me, this is why it's so popular. But they want that. And so the way that you're going to fuck up, guys, is you're going to have this really, really good girl and you're going to think she's a pure and good girl and she would never do any of that dirty shit and she wouldn't want any of that dirty shit. But you know what? In her mind, just like you have fucked up shit in your mind, uh, you, you know, it's not really fucked up, it's just our natural desires, she's going to want that stuff. And you're going to be treating her like a princess, and she's going to go and find that stuff somewhere else. She wants some guy that's going to treat her like the slut that she is in her mind. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay? So, I know some of you are like, no, this is not true, John. You're crazy. I'm not crazy. This is true. Okay? This is how you're going to fuck things up. And maybe you've already fucked them, them up. I've done it before in the past. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to exclude myself from this. But so it's not just, you know, that it's not going to be attractive to women, but it's also going to split your your psych, your psychology up so that you are separating these two, two things out. And you need to integrate them together and be a man. You need to be the kind of man that can be respectful to women and not treat them like objects, you know, all the time. Uh, it, but also be the kind of assertive man that when the time comes, that you can, that these things are like your sexual nature has you being the dominant man that takes charge, that is aggressive, that does these type of things. Whereas in your normal day, you can be kind of a, a polite person, but that's, it's still, but they're both still there. And the same thing, again, another danger is that you could be in bed and actually be ab abusive in a sexual way because 
you you don't have the, the softer side as well, right? So it's it's the two things, right? The nice guy, the typical nice guy, he is just an incomplete person. He is like a decent human being missing the dark side of the sexuality that actually makes him a man. So he's just like a little boy. Whereas, you know, the complete asshole like dark figure guy that's abusive and and beats women and, and does all this he he is just that dark nature that's why women are attracted to him because they're attracted from the sexual aspect of him but he's missing the boy do you understand what i'm saying he's missing and it's not necessarily the boy he's missing the softer side that makes him a complete and whole man this is a really really important concept to understand otherwise you're gonna fuck up bad because you're, you're going to split these two things and it's not going to help you in the attraction sense. It's also going to mess up your own psychology internally because you're not going to be able to deal with these things and process these things and have the right kind of relationships that, that, that you should have in life. So she told me, you are like a brother to me, but, but what she really did was keeping me at striking distance and treating me like a puppy dog while trying to avoid my very intense sexual desires for her, which she could sense 10 miles away. Okay, right? Just like I said, one of these days she discovered that I was taking sneaky photo shots of her, but she never said anything about it. Probably she thought I was a vital asset to her and our company in terms of workplace performance and very vital for her future career endorsement. That's why she couldn't bring herself to report this pervert issue of mine. Okay, so let's talk about it. I forgot I could do this. So let's talk about this. Uh, you, you, you done fucked up, dude. This is not good. All right. This is, this is definitely pervy stalker, you know, shit. You know it. I mean, you wouldn't email me if you know it. I don't need to like, I'm not trying to shame you or anything like that. Uh, we've all done our pervy stalker shit at some point. Okay. You know, maybe some people not to this extreme, but you know, we've all at least thought of, of doing stupid fucked up shit because we're obsessed with a girl. Okay. It's, it's happened. Okay. So this is kind of complicated because it is a workplace situation as well. So, you know, at this point, I think you should have probably just cut cut bait and said, oh, fuck, <laughs> I'm lucky she didn't report me. I'm done, like, having anything to do with her. I'm not going to bother her anymore, uh, especially if you value your job. But, hey, okay, so, um, so yeah, obviously, you know you shouldn't have done this. And, 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 and it's like I said, why was she keeping you at bay like that and treating you like a puppy dog? Well, because, uh, you know, because of, of what you're doing, that, that split, right? Uh, you know, had you, you know, this is delicate, but in the workplace, you, you still don't want to come across as the brother guy, right? You, you don't have to, like, be, I'm not saying to be sexually harassing. I'm just saying, like, to be, like, clear that your interest in her is of a non-platonic nature, let's say that okay but once you have not done that and you've kind of gone into the friend zone you're done i always knew that by playing the brother type of game she would just play damage control in order to keep our relationship just business and nothing else of course uh, while she enjoyed the company of her true brothers and sisters of whom i grew jealous and which she also sensed in me one day when i followed her friends on social media to intense i'm not sure what the fuck that means but all right she noticed my intentions and blocked me in an instant and this is where i took my final online rage on her also scary because of that until she finally quit on me okay so there's this is where it's gotten a little bit darker obviously here you know yes she's playing that brother type of game to 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 keep you at arm's length for for sure and to to make sure that you are just a brother so i think you understand a lot of things okay i i think some of the things i explained you already understood but it, it helps to say them anyway uh, so this is a little bit problematic that you were jealous of her enjoying the company of her true brothers and sisters i mean if you're jealous of like boys that she was you know boinking uh that would be a uh, different but of just like brother and sister relationships, like her friends and stuff that you want to be her friend, this is, again, a problem, right? Don't worry about this shit. Like, you shouldn't have been worried about this shit. This is where, where you got yourself into the kind of the stalker mode and got the obsession mode, okay? You can't grow jealous of, of the, these kind of things, right? Even even the other one, the relationship, you know. Um, follow, following her friends on social media, obviously, you know, that was dumb. And I don't know what you're saying or doing, but, you know, that's... You got to think about this too, right? And now I'll tell you guys at the at the end of the video. I, I told you I'd, I'd tell you how to like you know break this, but I'll give you like a hint, like a, a, which is basically this. I want you to realize that all this shit that you've done, right? Like like following her friends on on Facebook and 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 you know taking picture of her and shit like that, and and calling her sister. None of those things advanced your cause. None of those things moved the needle forward. Moved the you know you you don't understand what I'm saying. Like none of those things are effective. So 
part of changing your behavior is understanding that the behavior that you're doing is not effective. It's not enough to just do that, but that's where it begins. So I just want you to see like how all of these behaviors and things that you're doing, like, do you think that following her friends online would actually in any way make it more likely that she would get with you or like you, right? There's, it only decreases the chances, right? It does not increase them at all. The same thing with the taking pictures of her, obviously. So you're making poor choices, right, that are getting you not only not the result you want, but moving you into that obsessed stalker zone, which is not good either, right? So there are choices you can make that would actually benefit you. And that's what I want to teach you. And guys, if you haven't subscribed already, click subscribe uh, and click the bell to get notifications on the new videos coming out because uh, that's kind of some of the stuff I, I talk about on this channel. I think it's really important to talk about this kind of stuff. Okay, let's move on. Her last words. You have done many bad things to me, but I didn't tell anyone. Actually, I can call police to rob you when you're doing shit to me as capture photo of my legs and capture photo of when I walk up on the stair. Oh, man. <laughs> and I also have witnesses, my team. They saw that you captured it, but I don't want to do that because you were my coworker. Okay, well, that's nice. Uh, you better see a doctor to get psychology treatment. Nah. N.A., I don't know. Hope you have a better life. You can hate me as you want to do. Don't worry and sorry that I don't care. If you think I'm evil, yes, I am. I feel like that's a song. If people are nice to me, I'll be nice to them. Simple as that. But if they're not, I'll ignore the kind of people that don't want to waste my lifetime. <laughs> I feel like she she just like has a song for you, my friend. Uh, like the stalker song. You have done many bad things to me, but I didn't tell anyone. I can actually call the police to rob you when you're doing shit thing to me. As you capture photos of my legs. Uh, I don't know. It, it got really weird really quickly that's probably what she was thinking too it got really weird really quickly so okay so what am i saying what, what okay i don't even know i don't even know what to make of this except that you're lucky that she didn't like have a bunch of russian guys break your fucking legs because sounds like i mean i i don't think you're in the u.s here she's not or i don't know but uh she sounds like she could she could stir up some shit she sounds like she might be you know affiliated with the russian mafia so i would i would watch your shit around her okay you're, you're done <laughs> all right uh all right so let's see what she says uh what he says here i realized i was dancing to her tune all those four years four years fuck man and ever since this day, I can never forget about her. And I secretly kept following her friends on social media and screen record their events for my own selfish reasons ever since. I cannot imagine what your selfish reasons for screen recording her friends' events are. But, man. All right. I'm trying to... Trying to trying to just stay with you here. Okay, I can, I can kind of get this. I even go so far as create an alternative self-LinkedIn account to connect with her female friends and friend of her female friends randomly for my ultimate with a capital U, plans of online stealth revenge. I just couldn't help it. This is kind of getting scary shit. Again, like I understand why you emailed me and said that you're a fucking online stalker and you need some help and this is some pretty fucked up shit. I, you obviously get this. Uh, so, you know, you, you're, you're cognizant of your own psychosis. <laughs> this is good. But uh, it's bad that it's this bad. Forget the plans of an online stealth revenge. Never plan on revenge, okay? Uh, she didn't even really do anything to you, okay? Um, forget about her friends, all this stuff. You already know this, so... Any of this stuff that you're doing, by the way, is making you more obsessed. So that's what you have to do is, is quit this. So let, let's move on here. So my simple question is, how can I snap out of my intense obsession with this woman and her attractive friend? Oh, her friends are attractive too. Oh, I see. I see now. I didn't I didn't catch that the first time I looked at this email. All right, all right. I, I see what's going on here. Sorry in advance, this email was too long. I know you have many and millions of requests from millions of fans yes i have millions millions just millions of requests millions of fans you're right i like it true uh i appreciate this if this story would be featured on youtube wide one day well i will have to go viral for that i, I don't know if we'll go viral but uh but here okay let's talk about how you can just break this shit because we already know there's no point in beating a dead horse you you did some pretty fucked up scary shit uh you're kind of like an online stalker and yeah that's it's not good so uh, but how can you stop this? Well, the first thing is this, okay? The first thing is to understand this, which is that your behavior and your actions are not getting you the, the desired result. That's sort of the first step to breaking something like this, okay? If you understand and truly understand that, because in some fucked up way, 
right? Even though at a, at a conscious level, you know that they're not getting your results. In some subconscious na way, a lot of, you know, what we call nice guys, okay, blue pill guys, if you want to use that terminology, they believe that they're being super nice to women, they're stalking them, they're showing their obsessive love for them will somehow work. It won't work, right? We know it won't work, all right? There's just look up friend zone on the fucking internet and one million broken hearts and tears falling down guys faces will tell you that it does not work we know this okay it's an established fact it's you can't get any more sure than the fucking friend zone okay so this shit doesn't work all right so you need to really think about that and pound that in your head okay so what you need is an effective behavior to replace it by right we'll replace it with right it's kind of a habit okay so uh, I recommend a book by Rollo Tomasi. It's called The Rational Male. We'll put a I'll try to get the card. It's up here, and the link is in the description. I've talked about it a lot on this channel. I interviewed Rollo, in fact. Uh, I don't know if, which video will come out first, so so we'll see. But but that is like the red pill book, and it's good. Like you need to understand these concepts, okay? If because you understand the truth, then it'll it'll help you. Now there are behaviors that you can do that will actually improve your chances with women as opposed to the behaviors that you're doing that are making them much much worse and possibly getting you in jail and beaten up get your legs broken by russian mafia guys okay so those behaviors you need to learn you need to learn some skill okay now the only problem with those behaviors is that they require you to do one thing which you don't want to do when you're in this state, which is to stop obsessing over one girl. In Roland Tomasi's books, he calls it one-itis. I agree with him. It's, 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 it's a problem, okay? How do you do that? Well, you have to realize that it is not going to be easy, and you have to... So so the best way I could, I could, I could really help you to do this is, have you ever tried to meditate, right? If you've ever tried to meditate, what you'll find that the biggest struggle with meditation is you clear all the thoughts off your head. That's the plan. And then you start thinking thoughts, right? You focus on your breathing and then you all of a sudden you're thinking about what you're going to have for lunch and how much work you're going to need to get done and all these other things and the email you need to reply to. And the only thing you can really do is when you notice it happening, refocus back on your breath or, or try to clear your mind again, right? And you're just going to keep on drifting away. You're going to keep on coming back, right? And you'll become better at meditating just by the by virtue of continually doing that, right? Eventually, you won't drift as much, okay? It's the same thing here. You're obsessed about this girl. You can't stop thinking about her. You want to check her online. You want to check her friends online, right? You, you want to think about everything she's ever said to you and replay these things in your head and think about how fucked up the situation is and how sad it is and how happy you would be with it. Like, come on. Like, I know all this script, all right? So anytime you think about her at all, you've got to focus on your breath. <laughs> you got to go back to clearing your mind of it. You got to focus on something else. You cannot allow any of those thoughts. As soon as you do any of these destructive behaviors, you've got to just go back and it's going to be painful and it's going to be a long process and it's going to seem like it's not going to resolve itself, but it will. And I can tell you, you know, I mean, uh, you know, in back when I was a young man in my in my high school days, I had like a girl that I was obsessed about, I had multiple girls, right? And, and I... You had one that I had like recited her name so much in my fucking head, honestly, <laughs> that I would like wake up and have this name in my head, right? Just going over and over and over. And I had to basically like train myself to stop thinking that and stop saying that the same way because I, you know, this is what happens. Like, again, this is like things that people are uncomfortable about talking about, but it really does happen. Like you, you have to learn some of this shit. So so that's 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 the thing that's, that's going to help you guys right is you you got to do that and then the other thing is like i said is at the same time you know if you understand this madonna horror complex uh you, you'll understand that you know one critical thing about about women which is that they're just human beings okay just just like you right and maybe the exterior is very pleasant and you like it but it's still just an exterior it's just a human being un underneath there okay and so there's nothing really special, right? She has her flaws. She has her defects, just just like you. You're just you're just idealizing. And what's happening here is that you're projecting, actually. So, so the reason why you're obsessed, the reason why, comes from your need to be loved and your validation that you're seeking from the external, from her. So, 
what what you do, okay, is you say, in order for me to be a person valuable who's who's capable of being loved, who's worthy of being loved, I need this kind of perfect girl to love me, okay, or to approve of me. And so what you what you find is you find a girl that matches to some degree what you want, not 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 everything. You project upon her this image of the perfect girl, okay? Of the, the, the one that you put on a pedestal, the, the ultimate girl, okay? And then you try to seek her approval because if you can get her to love you and validate you, you, you can complete yourself. You can now be a worthy human being walking this earth. And that's what actually dehumanizes her to some degree. That's also what turns her off because you don't actually love her. You're not actually infatuated with her you're infatuated with the projection that you've projected upon her because she's just a normal human being she's not super okay she's not super special right there's there's not any human beings that are, are super special okay uh you know so 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 that's what's happened okay so if you realize that then you can kind of stop that projection okay and you can realize how destructive that is and why you know she could never actually like you because you don't actually like her you like the projection that you put on her OK, uh, and, and with that said, like if you can understand that you're doing that, then the cure to that is to honestly go out and start talking to a lot of women, dating, whatever you want to do. If you want to learn, pick up and run game, it's fine. Just don't get obsessed with that. But you need to get to the point where you can treat women as I, want, I don't want to say commodity, but as 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 normal human beings and there's lots of them lot, you know they say plenty of fish in the sea this is essentially the equivalent right you need to get to the point where you can you know be like okay you can be objective about it and you can objectively uh, you know decide the qualities of the women that you like instead of you know you know because what you'll find is a pattern of this right like you know you guys uh you know the the best proof i can give you for this is to show that you've done this multiple times right and i know because i've done this multiple times before i i had this awareness and this awakening is is that you've obsessed about you had this crush and this one and this one and this one and obsessed about them and you know this was the greatest woman in the world and your soulmate and now this one is and you, you see what i'm saying uh whereas if you're in sort of a, a healthy psychology and this there's none that you're like super there's girls that you like there's girls that you're sexually attracted to but but they're not they're not so super special right they're they're just people okay you know you might have preferences but you're not going to be obsessed. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this. I was supposed to do it like a sponsorship in this video. I decided not to because I forgot. <laughs> uh, how's that? All right, guys. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. All right. Click subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment. Like it. Whatever. Share it. I'll talk to you next time. Take care.